Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Heterogeneous Parallel Programming class. This is Lecture 1.2, Introduction to Heterogeneous Parallel Computing. The objective of this lecture is for you to learn the major differences between latency devices and um, throughput devices. Latency devices means CPU cores today, and the throughput devices means GPU cores today. To understand uh, how uh, uh, why winning applications actually are increasingly using both types of devices. This slide shows a typical uh, system on a chip, or SOC, uh, for uh, mobile phones today. In a typical mobile phone, we expect to see between two and four uh, CPU cores or latency cores. And we also expect to see two to four support-oriented cores or GPU cores. Uh, where uh, uh, there always uh, there has been a lot of hardware intellectual property blocks or hardware IP blocks that are used for uh, video decoding, uh, sound processing, and so on. And these IP blocks are becoming more and more programmable um, as well. And then we have the digital signal processing uh, uh, cores or DSP cores, and these cores are increasingly being used for computing. And uh, in, there is a uh, tended, uh, emergent trend for using configurable logic or configurable cores for, uh, uh, for making these SOCs more versatile in terms of uh, computing needs. And finally, we also have an increasing amount of on-chip memories that will be used by all these different types of cores to um, minimize their, uh, their consumption of the DRAM uh, access bandwidth. On top of all these different cores and memories, um, there's also a, a cloud service path where the applications can choose to use cloud services rather than uh, computation and the local cores uh, if, these, if these parts of the application are too demanding for the uh, cores to handle. So um, if we look at uh, this environment, the applications need to uh, deal with all these different heterogeneous collection of cores, and that's really a, uh, the, uh, at the heart of uh, what we're teaching in this class. So um, the mobile phone domain is not the only domain that has been using heterogeneous parallel computing. Uh, in the supercomputing domain, uh, we have very similar trends, where the top uh, 500 uh, super uh, supercomputers have more than half of their computing power that come from GPU cores uh, today. So uh, we're uh, definitely in, a, uh, in the uh, time where uh, uh, heterogeneous parallel computing uh, is becoming increasingly important. And the next few slides would uh, essentially present the fundamental reasons why the heterogeneous parallel computing is, the, uh, is an important uh, uh, trend for applications. So this slide shows that uh, CPU and GPUs are designed very differently. Uh, the CPUs are designed as latency-oriented uh, cores. And um, uh, we're showing, I show this uh, picture on the left-hand side. And then um, we show that uh, kind of a simplified picture of GPUs or throughput-oriented cores on the right-hand side. Just a higher level comparison before we go into details in the next couple of slides, I want you to, uh, to remember that uh, CPUs tend to have larger uh, local cache, and uh, GPUs tend to have smaller cache or local memory. And the GPUs tend to have larger number of registers, mostly to support a large number of threads. And uh, the CPUs tend to have a fewer number of registers and support a smaller number of threads. And GPUs tend to have larger number of SIMD execution units and the CPUs have fewer of those SID uh, units. The uh, CPUs tend to have sophisticated control logic, and therefore there's a bigger, uh, a big purple block labeled as control, whereas the GPUs tend to have very simple control, but a large number of threads to manage. So we have the purple block on the right-hand side that shows uh, a, a large amount of logic to manage schedule and, uh, threads and so on. So let's go a little bit deeper into the design of each device. As we mentioned, CPUs are designed to be uh, to 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 uh, design 
in a latency sensitive uh, philosophy. And um, uh, so uh, in the CPU design, we typically will have three prominent features. One is the uh, ALUs or arithmetic logic units are uh, designed as powerful logic that will generate these uh, numerical uh, uh, arithmetic results in very few clock cycles. And um, in typical C uh, CPU cores today, for a 64-bit double precision floating point operation, um, the uh, addition and uh, multiplication operations on these double precision data values typically will take on between one and three clock cycles. And these clocks are also running very uh, at uh, in very high frequency and um, at about 1.5 to three over three gigahertz. So uh, in terms of the, uh, the pure time latency of, um, of arithmetic operation, the CPUs have extremely short latency for pr producing uh, these uh, floating point arith arithmetic values. The, uh, the next big uh, feature, uh, prominent feature is that these CPUs tend to have very large caches. And these large caches are designed to convert long latency memory accesses to short latency cache accesses. And the uh, strategy is to keep as many data elements as possible in the caches so that whenever any of the CPU execution units need to access data, uh, chances are they will be able to find the data in the uh, cache from a previous access. So uh, the, uh, therefore, uh, the access time to this uh, data can be uh, uh, greatly reduced. The third one is sophisticated control. And the, uh, the, the control logic usually manifests itself in two forms. One is branch prediction um, support for uh, reduced branch latency. Branch instructions are generated from high level uh, language constructs such as if and else statements, such as loops. And um, uh, the decision for picking one of the paths of the if and else construct, or uh, the decision to determine whether a loop should be iterated uh, more times or exit uh, would, uh, be, uh, would be realized with control instructions. So uh, because these control instructions need to make these decisions, and let, um, these, in most of the modern uh, microprocessors, the actual decisions may take a long time uh, to make. So uh, having a prediction capability to, uh, for the hardware to predict which way the branch instruction will go will allow us to immediately uh, fetch and execute all the instructions um, that are in a predicted path. However, uh, we have to allow for the cases where the prediction may fail. If the prediction turned out to be incorrect, we need to keep enough of the processor's uh, state we, uh, to be able to recover from the incorrect prediction. And therefore, we need to have all these resources in the control logic to be able to support the branch prediction, making the prediction, as well as recovering from incorrect prediction. We also have uh, a lot of control logic that is dedicated for data forwarding, and um, uh, which takes care of the situation where uh, the output result of one instruction is needed by some subsequent instructions. And uh, the data forwarding logic that determines where those instructions um, are in the pipeline and uh, uh, route the result to those instructions as quickly as possible. And this involves a large number of comparison um, uh, circuitry and also routing circuitry. So uh, this can take a lot of chip area as well as execution uh, power and so on. So the, the, the bottom line is all these uh, mechanisms are there to reduce the latency of operations. The first one reduces the arithmetic um, calculation latency. The second one reduces memory access latency. And the third one um, reduces the branch decision latency as well as the latency for uh, between the generation of a data value and the execution of all the instructions that require that uh, value as input. GPUs, on the other hand, are designed as throughput-oriented devices. And um, uh, the GPUs tend to have very small caches. And these caches are not used to retain 
data in the cache for future accesses. But rather, these caches are designed as staging units for um, uh, a large number of threads. If there are many threads that are simultaneously exec uh, ex uh, executing, require the same data, then the cache memory will consolidate all these requests into one so that that request can go to the, uh, the DRAM. And when the data comes back, all, um, the uh, cache controller will actually serve as a forwarding logic to, uh, to distribute the, uh, the data to all the uh, execution um, units or threads that require that data. So the latency for going to the DRAM still uh, will still be there. However, the logic allows um, multiple accesses to be consolidated into, uh, into a smaller number so that we can conserve the uh, traffic going into the DRAM. And the second one is uh, you know, a simple control. And um, uh, this is shown as the, uh, so the, the small uh, yellow uh, boxes on the left-hand side. And um, in GPUs, we typically have no branch prediction, and we typically have uh, no data forwarding or very little data forwarding. So um, the, the third one is energy efficient ALUs. Instead of building small number of very powerful um, uh, ALUs with very short latency, with uh, GPUs usually come with a, a large number of long latency, but uh, very power efficient, low power ALUs. So uh, these ALUs are usually uh, heavily pipelined so that they can accept uh, one operation every clock cycle, and then it will take a long time for each operation to produce their result. So, but at the output of the ALU, uh, you will see one um, result coming out of the pipeline every clock cycle. So uh, having so many uh, ALUs and, um, uh, and such a long pipeline for every uh, ALU, we need to have a large number of threads, each one having a, uh, a, uh, a arithmetic operation that can be uh, uh, executing in those ALUs, in one stage of the ALUs, that, so that we can fully utilize all the hardware. So that's the reason why these devices are designed in such a way that if we have a massive number of threads, each one contributing some um, you know, operation at the same time, then we can fully utilize this large num these large number of ALUs to produce uh, results in a very high throughput. However, every thread will take a long time to execute, and every operation will take a much longer time to execute than the correspond uh, than their CPU counterparts. So now that we understand the design philosophy of the CPU cores and GPU cores, then we should be able to understand that the winning applications today need to use both CPUs and GPUs. And um, uh, we will use CPUs to execute sequential parts of the application where latency really matters. Because in the sequential part of the uh, application, there are going to be very few operations that can be done in parallel. And uh, so we just need to be able to execute these few operations very, very quickly so that we can get through these sections very quickly. On the other hand, we will use GPUs for parallel parts where the throughput wins. And um, uh, in those parallel parts, we'll have lots and lots of operations that can be done in parallel. So we use those operations to fully utilize the large number of ALUs in the, uh, in the GPU so that we can uh, go through, we can uh, um, uh, execute through those parallel sections extremely quickly. And whenever we use GPUs to execute these parallel sections, they can easily achieve 10 or more times uh, higher performance than CPUs. And that obviously the CPUs can easily achieve 10 or more times uh, 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 performance compared to the GPUs for, uh, for sequential uh, parts of the application. So um, naturally, um, a large number of application domains have already observed um, you know, this kind of phenomenon, and uh, many of them are using both CPUs and GPUs. In the, um, uh, in the field, we typically refer to the uh, compute, computing that use both CPUs and GPUs as GPU computing. And um, uh, so uh, this is definitely a, 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 a growing field. And um, uh, in 2010, I edited two volumes of GPU computing gems, and um, uh, that included 90 articles you know, 
on a successful use of GPU computing in different field application fields as uh, as well as some of the tools and environments that help application developers to be able to use heterogeneous computing successfully in uh, their applications. So the, uh, the domains that have successfully used heterogeneous parallel computing is definitely growing. And these are the fields that were covered by the GPU computing gems uh, volumes. Uh, the, uh, these fields include financial analysis, scientific simulation, engineering simulation, data intensive analysis, medical imaging, digital audio uh, processing, digital video processing, computer vision, biomedical informatics, electronic design automation, uh, statistical modeling, numerical methods, uh, ray tracing, rendering, and interactive physics. As you can see, uh, many of these uh, uh, applications are um, heavily used in our daily lives. So uh, this concludes our uh, lecture on an introduction to heterogeneous parallel computing. At this point, you should um, be able to understand the uh, very different nature of CPUs and GPUs. And um, uh, this will be an important foundation for us to, uh, to, talk, uh, to talk about programming, uh, parallel programming of the uh, throughput oriented devices in the next few weeks. And uh, if you uh, would like to uh, learn more about the uh, uh, nature of CPUs versus GPUs and some of the uh, more subtle uh, you know, insights about heterogeneous parallel computing, I'd like to encourage to you to read chapter one of the textbook by David Kirk and I. Thank you.